Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. So recently I made a YouTube short talking about audio to MIDI drum trigger. So today we're just gonna look at it in more detail cause I mean, 55 seconds is not enough to really cover everything about a JS plugin. So just to bring you up to speed, audio to MIDI drum trigger is a free JS plugin and it's essentially a gate. When the gate opens, it triggers a MIDI note. So before we get to doing all the wacky things, let me just show you what this is designed to do. In front of me, I have a drum recording and it sounds like this. Yes. Sounds really nice and well recorded. However, there's a lot of times when you do a drum recording where you may want to layer the acoustic sounds with some more synthetic sounds just to fortify certain elements of it. For example, what I'm seeing is the kick here could be a little more subby. So let's listen to it soloed and with the drum compressor disengaged. So it has a really nice click to it and the sub sounds good, but it's a little bit rattly. So on my second track here called Sample, I have Rio Samplematic 5000 and I have a kick sample on it that sounds like this. So it's got a very big oomphy kind of sub that I can blend into the original kick sound to get a little more sub out of it. And this is a very common practice. So we can automate this process using the JS Audio to MIDI drum plugin. And here we can set the MIDI note that this is going to, and I'm going to set it to 36, which is C1, which is where I have my kick sample loaded. And let's set MIDI channel to one. Let's just play the track and see what we hear. So as you can see, we're not hearing any audio, but we're seeing that some MIDI data is being sent. So now let's send our kick to our sample track and I'm going to disable the audio and keep MIDI as is. So we got a few problems here right off the bat and let's try to fix them. So there's some bleed in this track. And at least the problem we don't have currently is the bleed triggering samples. So if I turn this on and choose an area with just bleed and no kick, no MIDI data is being sent, which is really good, but let's still dial in the kick a little better. We can bring this up a little bit because the kick is quite loud. So already we're not hearing the bleed. We are also not hearing that doubling. So what this next parameter does, retrigger interval, it's easy to show with the sine wave. So let's check it out. Right now it's not passing through the gate. So let's bring the gate down. And this is what it does. So essentially, if the gate remains open because the signal is at a continuous loudness, it starts to re-trigger the same sound. So you can adjust this amount. So for our purposes, we don't want, if the sound is lingering above our gate a little bit, we don't want it to start machine gunning the kick. We're gonna set this amount accordingly. And the best way to set this, the tempo is around 90. So let's see how much a quarter note is. And the equation for that, 60,000 divided by BPM. And this is the amount for a quarter note. So I can actually bring this up quite a bit without it affecting anything. So every time the gate opens, we only hear the sample one time. The next parameter is the original signal mix. Now, as we said, we want to layer the kick. We don't want to totally stop hearing it. So I'm just gonna bring this to 100%. And so let's turn this down all the way. Now we're hearing the kick and now I can start blending the kick sample in. So I think that amount is fine. Now let's hear it and A, B the sample. Sounds like this with the sample. And you can rinse and repeat with all the other samples. So maybe you want to add something to the snares. Maybe you want to fortify the toms, but that's basically how the plugin works. And that is probably why it was designed in the first place. If this is what you want to do, that's it. You are free to go <laughs> or whatever. Go out, take an early lunch. And otherwise, let me show you some extra tips and tricks. If you want to use this to trigger your MIDI instruments. Okay, so here we are in a new project. This is what I showed in the short as well. Here, I just got the drum plugin from Labs loaded because whatever and it's playing this kick and snare pattern so what I want to do is play my hi-hat with my practice pad and sticks so that it sounds a little more human I have the same plugin loaded here and I have audio to drum trigger so this time our original signal mix is at zero because we don't want to hear the sound of the practice pad we are just using the audio we're getting from that to trigger our hi-hat sound so original mix would be at zero and this re-trigger interval you set the same way I'll show you what this does in a second so let's start playing with our hi-hat so I'm about to turn this on 
So this retrigger interval, you need to set based on how fast your pattern is. So right now I saw that with 50 is kind of a little too high. So let's just set it back to default. Okay, that seems fine. So let's record something with this. And now here's the hi-hat pattern that we played. We can later go and quantize it and do all sorts of things. And something that you notice, all the values are really quiet. So the way to fix that is with another free JS plugin called JS MIDI Velocity Control. And with this, you can multiply the velocity. So I'm multiplying everything by 1.7 and adding just 13 to the value of each one. And then I'm setting a maximum velocity as well. So nothing will be over 100. You don't need to worry about this stuff. Let's do a second take with this. So close enough for government work and you know I'm not a drummer but I think this is fine this is a lot more human so now as you can see these items are on two separate tracks so now what we can do is just command and x from here go down here command and v Obviously here I can take some of them and make them open hi-hats, you can delete some of them, whatever you want. So I really like this system. I don't do all my drums this way, but again, hi-hat is one of those things where I feel like a human really playing it sounds a lot different than if you program it. It's like a dead giveaway of programmed drums because they can sound really good, but the hi-hat just sounds too straight and too non-human. And you can humanize, but really those extra kind of hits that happen just by the way you hold your stick, just play it or you can pick it or you can beatbox it or whatever you want. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the work I do, please donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link of that will be in the description. A big thanks to Ken and Michael, who are our two most recent subscribers, both with really generous donations. Really warms my heart. Thank you so much. And I'll see you all very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye.